If you want to bang out an entire table's worth of modular cyberpunk city terrain in under an hour for only a couple bucks, well, then I've made the perfect thing for you. Hey, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. I love the idea of stackable terrain buildings for cyberpunk and kind of futuristic settings. And previously I made these, which I really like. I think they look great, but they're not the easiest to make and they take quite a bit of time. So I wanted to develop something that was similar, but a lot more efficient and easy to replicate. I busted out my Photoshop skills and made a bunch of printable designs that you can just slap onto some foam core cut and glue together for very quick buildings. This set here was made with only two sheets of foam core and a dozen or so printable sticker sheets. So the raw material cost here is less than five Canadian loony dollars. First of all, you gotta print out the designs. I'll put a link in the description to the files that you can download for free to print out your own. Now I printed mine at home on sticker paper. I'll link to the stuff that I used as well, but if you don't have a decent color printer at home, you can send the files to a place like Staples or a local print shop, and they can print them for you for very cheap. Ask if they can do crack and peel stickers as that's the most efficient way to do this. But if not, just get it printed on some glossy paper and use a glue stick to apply. I cut off any large areas of blank sticker first and then stick it right to my foam core. Now, if you don't have foam core, you can definitely get away with using cardboard for this. To make sure you get a nice bond without any air bubbles, take the waxy paper backing from the sticker and place it on top after you apply it. Then use a straight edge to burnish the paper, making it nice and smooth and stuck down. From there, you can cut out the image and the foam core at the same time using a utility knife and a straight edge. Cut in a couple passes and use a sharp blade for this so you don't tear the foam core. Also, it's best to place your straight edge on top of the printed image rather than on the white so that you can bring it back just a hair and make sure that when you do your cut, you aren't left with a tiny strip of white on the edge. After you have a bunch of wall and roof pieces ready to go, you can assemble as desired. This set that I designed has a bunch of different long and short walls and roofs that you can mix as you like to create slightly different structures. I designed the roof pieces so that they are the same length as the long walls, meaning the short walls with the thickness of foam core will fit perfectly between them. If you use a different substrate that is thicker or thinner than typical foam core, you might have to adjust and cut off a bit of extra roof or short wall to make everything fit. Hot glue is a great choice for assembly, but it can be a bit messy with those wisps and it does force you to move very quickly before the glue cools. Another option is double-sided tape. I buy these rolls in applicators from Dollarama and they are awesome for all sorts of things. They're easy to roll onto a surface and the glue on them is surprisingly strong. That being said, it's not a bad idea to reinforce the joints from the inside with some hot glue after putting it together if you do use something like tape. This video is brought to you by Tenfold Dungeon, an exciting new product from Gale Force 9. Tenfold Dungeon is a modular terrain system meant to make game night more exciting and immersive with no extra prep work for the game master. These sets are essentially a much better, more professional version of what I'm making in this video. They're a lot higher quality and far better designed as they nest inside themselves for easy storage. Even the main box for each set is itself a large piece of usable terrain. The the coolest part is that they can be used either for interior rooms or flipped over to act as exterior structures. They already have traditional fantasy sets available, but they've just expanded and added four new sci-fi sets. So if you don't want to go through the hassle of building your own cyberpunk city like I am, you can instead use their simple solution. What's great is that they're still very affordable. They're perfect for both RPGs and skirmish games like Stargrave. These are made of high quality stock and are ready to use right out of the 
the box. If you want to grab some for yourself, check with your favorite local game store or head over to tenfolddungeon.com to order. I'm super impressed with just how well this system is designed, and I highly recommend them for your own games. Thanks Tenfold Dungeon and Gale Force 9 for sponsoring this video. You'll end up with a bunch of structures that quickly look quite good and usable, but do have some exposed foam edges. This actually isn't that bad when using black foam core, but it wouldn't look very good if you're using white foam core or cardboard. So I created a bunch of different strips that you can use to cover these corners. Use whichever ones you want or a mixture to give your set some variation. All you need to do is cut them out and apply them right over the edges. And it's up to you if you want to apply them to just one side, to two sides, or fold the piece around the corner to hit both sides at once. This is a very simple system, but it allows for a lot of different ways of doing things. It's basically like paper Lego. If you want to kick things up a notch and add a tiny bit of depth to the flat printed walls and generally just have straighter, flatter pieces, you can apply the sticker to a sheet of black medium weight chipboard or something like a cereal box first, then cut the strips, giving yourself nice rigid strips to apply as needed. You can also use the cutoffs or extras to do some vertical strips on the walls if you need to hide anything or just want to enhance the look a little bit. Now these buildings are designed to stack, which is all well and good, but it does limit your play area for models to just the the ground and the roofs. So it makes the set a lot more usable if you make some ramps and overhangs to put between the levels. To make these, you can use the roof sheets cut into whatever widths or lengths you want. Then you just take those strips with the chipboard backing and use them to cover the edge of the cut foam core. Take another pair of those strips and attach them to the sides of the top surface and run them long. Then they'll be able to hook onto the building's roofs and make walkways. The strips are thin enough that you can still stack another building on top without issue. You can also make walkways that don't need to span between two buildings, but can instead just wrap around one single one. These are slightly more complicated, but they're made using basically the same method. You just need to have the final strips overhang into the one structure it's gonna be sitting on, and you need to make sure that things are nice and snug so they don't wobble around. Now this set would look kind of weird and boring if you only have the one size of box. So to make other structures, just cut down the walls and the roofs to shorter lengths to create smaller structures. If you want some ruined walls or standard wargaming corners, you can also do that using the walls. Just glue two of them back to back, cut a jagged damaged line and glue two together in a right angle. Again, use the strips to cover the exposed edges. The long strips can actually be applied to the top cut edges to hide the foam. And of course, use your imagination to come up with different ways to use all these pieces, especially the scraps and cutoffs to make different structures to spice up your set. This is a very simple set of assets, but can be used in a surprisingly large number of ways. Now this isn't the fanciest set, but it's very practical, super cheap, and so easy to put together. It's also great because if you add pieces to it at a later date, they will perfectly match without having to worry about paint color. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed this build. If you did, hit the like button, let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. All of those things really help this channel continue to grow on the platform. If you want to support the channel and the work that I do, you can do your shopping on blackmagiccraft.ca where I have an essential equipment page with Amazon affiliate links to all of the stuff that I use regularly. You can also help out the channel in a huge way by joining the Black Magic Craft Fellowship on Patreon. That's it. I'll see you next time. Cheers and happy crafting.